Hi, this is a short demo of Kick Support Pack CA1S, which uses WebCS Mesh technology to provide PHP scripting features to Kix TS 3.2, um, as well as a number of conventions to simplify the creation of RESTful web services on Kix. So having followed the docs to install and configure CA1S on the Kix system, the next thing to do is to write some simple PHP scripts. I'm doing this using Eclipse PDT, uh, but you can use whichever editor you prefer. Uh, I'm also using the Eclipse RSE plugin to be able to directly uh, interact with the remote file system. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a script under the scripts directory, a uh, really simple one. And then I'm going to flip over to my browser and load that up. Um, by default, scripts will be available under ca1s slash scripts. And there's my script, hello.php load that up and uh, there it is. So that, that's executing my script as expected. Now one of the great things about uh, scripting environments is that you can just go in and modify your script, save it, load it up again in the browser and your change is reflected directly. There's no compilation and uh, deployment steps required so that makes for a very agile development environment. So having seen that, let's take a look at a slightly more elaborate example. CA1S allows you to interact with Kix Com Air applications directly from your PHP scripts. So the, the specific Com Area application that I have set up on my Kix system is called Library, and it provides a modifiable list of books and the ability to mark books as borrowed or returned. The PHP script that you see here accesses that Kix COBOL program and prints out the list of books available in the library. You can use the JSOS record generator that's included in the support pack to automatically create a Java class that represents the com area. In this case, library underscore com area in the package library. Now, because we're using a PHP runtime that's written in Java, uh, we can actually import this Java class and make it available directly to the PHP script using this Java import command here. We can then new up an instance of the com area class and prepare it for the invocation by setting some input data. In this case, we're simply stating that we want a list of books by setting the request type to list here. Next, we use the built-in class kicks program to say that we want to invoke the program called library, and we use the link method on that class to actually invoke the program uh, using the com area that we created earlier. After that call, the com area contains the result of the link, so we can access, the, for example, the total number of books in the library or iterate over the list of books uh, and get the author and the title for each one. And here's what we see when we load that up in the browser. Now PHP has some interesting reflection capabilities. So say if I didn't know that there was a set lib request type method on the com area, I could use PHP's get class methods in order to inspect the com area object and to see the list of methods on that object. So if you if you don't have prior knowledge of your Kix program, you can you can inspect it from PHP using reflection. Um, we could have done the same with the actual book objects that we retrieve from the com area. So there's get book author and above that get book title. Next, let's take a look at some of the RESTful conventions in CA1S. They're in fact a subset of uh, those in WebSphere Smash, so if you've used Smash, you'll be familiar with them. So the idea of REST on the web is to provide a really simple interface for accessing and manipulating resources using HTTP requests. And the nature of the manipulation is determined by the URI of the request and the HTTP method. So for a given resource, there are commonly two kinds of URI, the collection URI and the member URI. And then there's four possible uh, HTTP methods, get, post, put, delete. Uh, so that means that there's eight possible operations on a resource, uh, but commonly uh, the ones that are most often used are the LCRUD events, so the list, create, retrieve, update, and delete. Now by convention in CA1S, if a resource handler script exists for a given URI, the PHP engine will attempt to invoke a well-known method in response to each type of request. So we have on list for the list event and so on. So to illustrate this, I've created a script called book.php in the resources directory, which by default is configured to provide the behavior we just discussed. Book.php defines a class book and handler methods for each of the LCRUD events. Each one simply prints out a different string and uh, the handlers corresponding to members rather than collections also print out the ID that they operate on using the zget function. 
um, which exposes various properties of the inbound request. So to test this, I'm going to use a Firefox extension called Poster, which is right here. Um, and it allows us to issue different types of HTTP requests to a given URL. Um, so if I do a GET request, I get my list string back as expected, because I'm doing a GET request on the collection URI. And if I do a GET request on a member URI, then I get a retrieve back. And similarly, if I do an update, oh, I need to put some data in for an update. I get the expected response back, uh, delete, and a post on the collection URI corresponds to a create event. So there it is. So we've seen how to invoke Kix Com error programs and how to create RESTful event handlers. So as you can imagine, we can put the two together and RESTfully expose a Kix Com error program. So we're going to do that with the library application using this enhanced version of the book.php resource handler. There's some code at the top that will be executed for all events that import the Java classes that we're going to be using and that sets the uh, content type of the response to JSON because this uh, web service that we're creating will speak JSON exclusively. Uh, there's also a, a constructor in the class that's invoked also on all events. Uh, but aside from that, we've got the same event handlers that we had before, the LCRUD events. Um, there's just a little bit more logic in them. So here's the list one, for example. So as previously, we're doing a list on the Comera program and we're iterating over the books, but this time we're building up an associative array that we're converting to JSON using the JSON encode function. On create, similar idea, except that there's an extra step there to verify some input data that corresponds to the uh, title and author that's used to actually create the book. So that's passed to us as JSON in the request and we decode it. And, uh, and use that then to create the book by invoking the Kixcom error program with the add request type. So retrieve, update, and delete are similar. So retrieve gives us a single book. Update allows us to mark a book as on loan or returned, and delete removes a book from the library. So the result is that my Kix asset, which used to be locked up on the Kix system, has very quickly become available on the web. And because it uses very common technologies like REST and JSON, it can easily be consumed by other web services or by mashups built, for example, with WebSfit Smash. This is a really simple HTML and JavaScript front end that runs directly on CA1S. It uses Dojo to issue AJAX requests to the REST service, and that allows me to interact with the library program directly from this web page. So that was a quick demo of Support Pack CA1S. Thanks for watching. There are many features that we didn't cover, so please take a look at tinyurl.com slash phponkicks, which will redirect you to the main CA1S site. And from there, you can download the Support Pack to try it out. You can access the documentation. And there's also a forum where you can get help and give us feedback. Finally, for more information on WebSphere Smash, you can visit the community site at projectzero.org. Thanks very much.